morning prayer this morning, so glad that you can all be here to worship with us. Uh, this morning, uh, we have uh, Sandra and Ken and Rosalind, and they're going to be uh, singing for us this morning and help to lift up our voices to God in prayer. And they're going to begin by singing, Jesus Calls Us Over Trumbles.
that give power and commandments to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people the impenitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. A pardon and absolve of all they that truly repent and are fain believe his holy gospel. Wherefore beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that all things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, open thou our lips. And our lips shall go forth our praise. O oh God, make seek thee to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be, the world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let's say together the words of the Lamb. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us sharply rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. For in his hands are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills are his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands are prepared to draw men. O come, let us worship and fall down, and be able for the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The day, O heaven, you will hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I agreed with that generation that said, Is it the people that do fear in their hearts, for they have not known my ways? Unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was the beginning, now after shall be, world without end. Now welcome Matt Nichols to come forward. Nichols is going to lead us in our song.
first lesson is taken from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 to 5 and 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on a sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth that worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers herein. To thee the cherubim and the seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts.
Please stand as we say the words of the Bible.
through Jesus Christ our Lord. arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And as Jesus passed along the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, men in their nets. And immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired hand and followed him. The Gospel of Christ. Well, is that was the one reading this one in it?
Please be seated.
of my note and the meditation of our house be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As a child, I can remember playing many different games, things that kept us occupied. Most of our games took place outdoors, although some of them were really deep inside in the house or in the hall and different groups that were involved in. Anybody here remember playing copies growing up? For the younger people, cabbies was like we'd be out in the garden, we'd be making mud cakes. We're kind of like following what our moms and dads were doing, right? Our moms were doing in the kitchen when we were making mud cakes in the garden. Another game that we used to play was tag. Anybody ever play tag? Yeah, we used to really love playing tag. Yeah, and running around, give our, give our hearts a good workout. It was another way of getting our exercise. Another game we used to like to play was Simon Says. Anybody here play Simon Says? For anyone who don't know how to play Simon Says, how the game would go is you would say, well, Simon, Simon Says touch your head. Simon Says touch your nose. Simon Says touch your ears. Touch your chin. Now, if you didn't say Simon didn't say, you weren't supposed to do it. So then you would be out. So I thought we could have a little game this morning, have a little fun. We can play Simon Says. Everybody on board, I hope. Because I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> okay, so Simon Says touch your head. Simon says, touch your nose, touch your chin. Oh, you're all this. Oh, somebody got caught. I can't stop. I caught somebody back here. Simon says, touch your ear. Simon says, touch your head. Simon says, stand up. I'm not going to stand up. Sit down. Oh, a couple of people almost got caught, but they caught themselves. Simon says, sit down. Okay. Simon says, touch your nose. Simon says, touch your shoulder. Someone says, touch your eyes. He you touch your head. Oh, how about people that time? <laughs> but when Simon says, you have to pay attention, you really need to listen to what the person is telling you to do. And sometimes you don't have a lot of time to react. And sometimes we get caught. Sometimes we get caught doing things that we shouldn't do, things that Simon didn't tell us to do. But what Simon says was always a little fun game when we were playing up, and we would play until, of course, there would only be one person left, and the person who was directing would have to go faster and faster to try to catch that last two people, so one of them fooled up. So listening to the game is probably the easiest part. Doing what we are called to do can be challenging, and sometimes we make mistakes, and sometimes we don't do what we're supposed to do. And life is very much like that, you know. We, we listen to what God is saying to us. And even though we might hear what he's saying, uh, doing what he asks us to do can be very challenging. We can be challenged by the fact that it could be really difficult. It could make us feel really uncomfortable. And maybe the something that he's asking us to do is something that we really don't want to do. In the Bible reading this morning, they talked about Jonah. Jonah was being asked by God to do something that he really didn't want to do. He was called to go and warn the, the people of Nineveh about God was very really upset with him. He was going to bring destruction upon the city. And Nineveh was our enemy to the uh, nation where uh, Jonah belonged. So it was kind of a bit of a twofold thing. First, he was afraid of the people of Nineveh. And secondly, he probably didn't really want to warn them. He probably wanted to see destruction of these people who were his arch enemy. He probably wanted to see something bad happen to them because they kind of deserved it. That might have been his same as a way of thinking about But he knew that God had better plans. As we heard from the story that Isabella told this morning, he got on the boat. And even though he tried to get away from God, God still fell away to get him back to live above. Not everyone who hears God calling answers the call. Not everybody does exactly what God wants them to do. But sometimes it's a lot easier to uh, listen to God and obey because in the end, God usually gets his way. I know as he was walking along the shores, as Jesus was walking along the shores that day, and he seen fishermen in the boat. And the first people he came across was Simon and Andrew. And he said, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they got after boats and they followed Jesus. They wanted to know what was this new life that Jesus was calling them into. 
Next he came, Jesus came along James and John. And we're told that James and John also left their boats. They left their father Zebedee and they went to be with Jesus. They let go of this own way of life that was very useful to them as fishermen. They were making, getting food for their table. They were probably selling their fish that would give them the resources that they needed to buy other things. So they probably had no reason to leave what they were already doing. But they decided to follow Jesus anyway. This was also going to be a shift in their identity of who they were. They had probably known their whole life to be fishermen. But now they were going to be fishermen of a different kind. They were going to fish for people. And that was going to call them to learn new habits and let go of their old way of living. Because I imagine their life was quite different being a fisherman than what it was going to be as following Jesus. So as children of God, we are each called to follow Jesus. We are called to live a different life, which is not always easy. Because we need to learn the way of Jesus and we need to go and follow what we learn. It's not something to just have the head knowledge. We also need to have the heart knowledge to be able to act on that. I was watching a, a video the week and um, there was a minister who, uh, the story was told about a minister who will, spoke a very powerful uh, message on discipleship. And I guess it really moved one man in particular because at the end of the service, he came up to the minister at the back of the church and he was very angry, actually. He said, don't you ever do that again. He said, I'm not a disciple, I'm a member. So I guess he liked to be a member of the church, but he didn't want to be a disciple, someone who was following Jesus and actually doing the things that Jesus called him to do. It's a quite a different way of looking at our faith, quite a, way, a different way of looking at why we're being involved in the church. We're called to be disciples who will follow, not people who will just listen and keep it all in our heads and walk away. So following is not easy. It's probably one of the most difficult things we'll do in our life is to follow Jesus and to be the people who God calls us to be. And we struggle to faithfully follow God's call. Because sometimes we're asked to speak out against the injustices that we see. Because we all see things in the world that's not how God intended it to be. But God calls us to speak out against it, to give voice to the things that we see wrong. And that can make us feel very uncomfortable. It can probably sometimes put us in places that we don't want to be. God calls us to confront bullying attitudes and mean-spirited gossip. Because sometimes we're in the rooms that we can hear stuff that's being said that shouldn't come out of the mouths of people who are following Jesus in his path. So sometimes we are probably called to gently nudge people and think about what they're saying, if that's really a good idea. And we are called to be faithful followers. We're called to live from our hearts, to live out of love, and to show love for each and every person we meet without judgment. And letting go of judgment is not easy either. But each and every one of us are sinners. Each and every one of us do things that are not entirely what God would call us to do. So being in love with each and every person that we meet is very important if we're going to follow in the way of Jesus. So we're called to live by faith. We're called to live by trust. And we're called to live in hope. And when we listen to the call of God in our lives to the best of our ability, we can truly be the people who God calls us to be. We can be disciples of Jesus instead of just members of a church, like members of a country club. So following Jesus, we let the Spirit lead us, and we give away to our fears. We just let it all go to God. And let him take us where he needs us to go. And that way we can let go of our old habits, we can let go of our old way of thinking, and we can even use our prayers to give us strength. So I pray for each and every one of you, and again for myself also, and each and every person that's listening online, that they'll always listen to God's call. And if you see a situation, ask, what is God calling you to do? Where is God leading you today? How can we faithfully follow in his footsteps and be the people that God calls us to be? God bless each and every one of you this week, and may you all be faithful followers of Jesus. Amen.
loving God, before the world began, you called us. Make holy all we offer you this day, and strengthen us in that calling. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may hear God's call to be the salt for the earth, instruments of God's love, and faithful witnesses to God's message to our families, co-workers, and communities. In our triocesan intercessions, we pray for the parish of Baylargent and their rector, Reverend Renee Eason and their six congregations. We pray for the parish of Bay of Islands, priest in charge, the Reverend Effie Gordon, and their two congregations. We pray for the parish of Bay Roberts Coley's Point and our rector, the Reverend Christine Lynch, and our congregations of St. Matthew and St. John the Evangelist. Lord, hear our prayer. For the greater openness to the word of God, that we may allow the word to penetrate our hearts, call us to life, and motivate us to serve God lovingly. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater love for the word of God, that we may take time to read, ponder, and pray with the scripture, so that we may deepen our relationship with God and take on the mind and heart of Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian unity, that God will heal the wounds and the misunderstandings of the past, lead all the baptized to offer a more united witness to the gospel, and offer greater service to our suffering and our vulnerable neighbors. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater care for the earth and its resources, that God will guide us in being good stewards of the earth and protecting its resources for future generations. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill, that God's Spirit will rest upon them, relieve their suffering, and restore them to wholeness, remembering Dwayne, Ron, Jean, Susan, Cecil, Fred, Kim, Margaret, Vicki, Ella, Bill, and Phyllis. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, and remembering today Sylvia Greenland, that Christ may welcome her and all who have died to their eternal banquet of God's reign. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the health and spirit of thy grace, that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing, and grant these, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all people, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving help unto all nations. More especially we pray for the good state of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by a good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold a faith in unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in the righteousness of life. 
and finally commit to our Father forgiveness all those who are in any way afflicted or distressed in body, mind, or spirit. That it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience on their suffering and a happy issue out of all of their afflictions, and this we beg in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thy unworthy servants to give thee most humble and heartfelt thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all blessings of this life, but above all for thy inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace, and for a hope of glory. I beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all of our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom and thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, rule with an end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time of one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and thus promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them. Grant us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you now and forevermore. Amen. And I now want to welcome uh, Ages to come forward, and they'll be doing our closing thing. Thank you so much, everybody, for worshiping with us today. We have a couple of announcements as you're getting ready to set up. And we're going to have a uh, vestry meeting for St. John the Adventist Church this week. Uh, that will be on Tuesday night in a regular meeting place. So hopefully all vestry members can be there for that. Um, on Thursday morning at 10.30, we'll be centering prayer again at uh, St. John the Adventist Hall up there on that road. So anybody who wants to take part in centering prayer are welcome to come and join us for that. And our... Um, Worship next Sunday will be in St. Matthew's Church, and that will be at 10 Thank you.
to Aegis and thank you to uh, Jean and Rosalind and Pam and Sandra for lifting up your voices today on behalf of all of us. We're all missing the congregational singing, but we're enjoying that you're lifting up your prayers for us. So thank you very much. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 